Hello and thank you for joining me again on Run Level Zero. Today we're going to take a look at a new release from Makulu Linux, their KDE 4.11 desktop version. I was first introduced to Makulu a couple of months ago with their XFCE version and I was really encouraged by what I saw so I was happy to see them release another desktop environment. Uh, just an update to them their XFCE version has been updated to a 4.3 version but I'm not going to follow up on it until 4.4 because they're, they're talking about implementing some changes reporting some changes over from their KDE version so I'm going to follow up with them with that 4.4 they're also working on a GNOME desktop edition so that ought to be pretty pretty interesting as well what I like about Makulu Linux there are several things um, Makulu is based on Debian, so it's going to offer a very stable platform and it's going to have a lot of support online. Just about anything that you can find is going to work on it because Debian has become one of the standards for uh, uh, Linux as far as the dev files and, and most, most packages that, that you want to install are going to be supporting that. So let's dive right in and see what you get with Makulu Linux. One of the things that you're going to notice about Makulu is, well, obviously the hippopotamus theme, but they tend to uh, take a lighthearted approach to computing, as you're going to see. that it, they, they have a consistent theming, but it seems to be very lighthearted. They, they, but don't let that fool you, though because Makulu is a serious desktop when, when you look under the hood there, there's it really has a lot to offer it brings a lot to the table they also seem to listen to their their users which is something that I respect uh, one of the things that I saw consistently on reviews about the previous version of Makulu folks didn't really care for the icon scheme so that's one of the things that really impressed me is that they listen to their their users and they've implemented a new icon scheme but anything that that you you really don't like in a Linux distro um, I heard a good saying one time is eat the meat spit out the bones if there's anything you really don't like about a distro you can change it so keep the core of it and change what you don't like and I really like Makulu as a whole for me the theming is is a little it's not my cup of tea so that's one of the things that I would change but that's really about the only thing I would change about Makulu now their desktop is suitable for a new user they poured over a lot of uh, utilities from Linux Mint and they, they've really gone out of their way to create a desktop environment that is as user friendly as possible as you're going to see. So I would recommend Makulu for a new user. I think it would be a safe environment to get introduced to Linux and if you, know, if you didn't want to go into the realm of Ubuntu or Ubuntu based distros, this Debian based distro is a safe place to get your feet wet with Linux. So what is new in Makulu KDE? Well one of the big things you can see scrolling across the top of the screen here is a news ticker and this this was really the first time I've seen this implemented in a Linux distro they may not have been the first but it's the first time that I've seen it and what this news ticker does is give you updates to Makulu Linux uh, let you know all the latest uh, the latest news any updates that they want to get out if you don't like it you can always remove it but I, I think that ticker was a an interesting novel idea. With Makulu uh, KDE version you're going to get a standard uh, traditional desktop layout with a few tweaks. Meaning you're going to get you're going to get one standard desktop with a panel across the bottom and this is running in a virtual machine. I've given it uh, two gigabytes of RAM and two dedicated processors as I do with all my distros just to keep my my reviews fair. On the desktop there is a widget to give you access to your home folder so you have all of your fo your file folders right at your fingertips 
as well as a clock. The one panel across the bottom, you have some nice transparencies already set up. On the lower right hand corner is the clock and calendar, notifications area, battery monitor, network monitor, volume control with access to your mixer, clipboard manager, as well as your update monitor. Any open windows, of course, will be displayed in the central portion. And on the lower left corner, you have access to your file manager, which is Dolphin. And if, you've, if you're familiar with uh, Ubuntu, if you're familiar with KDE, you're going to see uh, Dolphin is actually one of the more powerful file managers available. You can do a lot with Dolphin with this integrated terminal and... Uh, it's just a nice, nice file manager. All right, back down to it. You have access to your web browser, and Chromium is the web browser of choice here. A terminal launcher, as well as your software manager. Let's take a peek at that. All right, here we go. So, the software manager they have installed is Mint Install 7.4.4, so this is ported over from Linux Mint. It is a nice user-friendly uh, software manager. You can, of course, obviously your uh, packages are categorized by their functions, so if you're looking for web browsers, you're just going to go into Internet. So, yeah, one of the more user-friendly file managers, or program managers there. Clicking on the little strawberry is going to pull open your uh, applications menu, and they're using Lancelot here for their menu. Um, not my favorite menu, but being KDE, you can easily change that. Let's see. Let's see what you get installed. For games, you have quite a few games installed by default, as well as Play on Linux and Steam. Under Graphics, uh, not much to show. Uh, simple image editor and image magic. For internet, there's quite a bit here. You have a feed reader, Bluetooth support, a Chromium web browser, a BitTorrent client, Dropbox is installed for you. You just have to sign in. FlareGit, which is a download manager. Let's see, Kmail for your email client. Uh, Conqueror web browser, which is the default web browser for KDE. Mumble for voice chat. Nitro Share, Pigeon Internet Messenger. Of course, Steam and Ticker, which is your feed reader. You see it up here. Under Multimedia, Audacious is installed for your music player. FF Multi Converter for, conver for converting your media files. Sound Mixer, which is KMix. Nero is installed. And one of the things that really I like about Makulu is that they don't stick with the same default packages that you're going to find in every other Linux distro. They do step out of the box a bit, which I appreciate that. Uh, really exposes users to uh, application suites that they may not be familiar with. So you have Nero for your optical media, VLC. Uh, for your media player. VocoScreen, which is an excellent screencasting utility. In fact, when I first used Makulu XFCE was the first time I was introduced to VocoScreen. So I'm seeing it more often now, but uh, Makulu was the first one that I saw it in. For Office, and this is another thing that I appreciate, um, you get the Kingsoft Office Suite. I like Kingsoft. I like the way that they're going with it, and this is really the first distro that I've found that uses Kingsoft as its default uh, office suite. It supports theming, and you can tell its layout is very similar to that other office suite that's the primary, and it is <laughs> Microsoft Office. So uh, it is fully compatible with Microsoft Office, and I believe that it actually saves to office formats by default. I may be wrong about that, but I believe it does. So have a go with it. You really I don't think you'll be disappointed with Kingsoft. 
let's see, for settings, you have your standard set of uh, uh, system settings. You can see Gparted is already installed for managing partitions. You have Device Driver Manager. You can customize the login window, your print settings, again your so uh, software manager. You can launch the system settings, which is going to pull open your KDE control panel. Let's see, under system, there's quite a bit installed here for you. BleachBit is installed to keep your system squeaky clean. And I suggest that you run BleachBit uh, on a regular basis. Run it as root as well. Um, just to make sure, especially if you do any banking or shopping online, just to keep all that unnecessary stuff cleared out of your system. You don't want uh, sensitive user data just hanging around on your computer. If it's not there, nobody can grab it, right? You have a boot repair wizard here. Let's see. You have a live USB installer. Don't want to hit everything. Just want to hit on some uh, some highlights. Uh, let's see. That again, another USB image writer down here. Wine is installed, so you can try to get your Windows applications in, uh, installed on the Linux system. Let's take a look at KSysGuard see where we're running under system load it's running at 470 meg which that's not too bad especially for a KDE implementation that's that's not bad at all and for utilities let's see you have Conkey manager which you will allow you to set and modify your, your Conkey theme should you choose to use it and KWrite is your text editor one thing to note if you are a newer user and you do want to change some of these widgets the widgets on Makulu are locked by default so if you want to change any of those the first thing you're gonna to have to do is right click the desktop and check unlock widgets now you can see that it opens up the control panel for each widget so if you don't want your ticker you know you can remove it if you don't want your clock you can remove it if you don't like the Lancelot menu, you want to try something different, that's very easy. You can just right click on your panel, go to Panel Options, Add Widgets, and then you can open up any other application launcher that you want. So you can just grab one and then drag it down wherever you would like it. Then if you don't like that one, you can remove the Lancelot launcher and go with a more traditional KDE launcher. So that is entirely up to you. You can also right click that and go to a classic menu style if you like something a little more straightforward. So, you know, customizing this system is really, really easy. Let's see, let's go to default desktop settings. And here's where you're going to be able to change your wallpaper should you not like it and there are quite a few hippo themed wallpapers already in here like I said they take a really lighthearted approach to it and and I do appreciate that but if you don't care for the theming since it is such a highly customized theme you know they say whenever you're trying to sell a house you want to paint it neutral colors because when you customize it so much you know it may put potential buyers off well the same thing goes with the desktop environment if you want to attract the largest crowd possible you really want to neutralize the desktop and by having this uh, hippo lighthearted theme you know it's fun and I like it personally but I could see where it could put off some potential users and if you're in that category please don't let that put you off from trying Makulu. Uh, Makulu is an excellent distro and I'm really excited to see the direction they're moving in I'm looking forward to following them in the future uh, Please give it a try. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your experience is. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe, comment, and rate it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. But please always keep it nice. Don't, uh, don't beat anybody up because of the questions they ask. Uh, let's always take an opportunity as more experienced users to help mentor the newcomers to Linux because we want them to have an excellent experience so that they can continue to grow 
and uh, and use Linux as their environment. Uh, thank you for joining me. I hope to be with you soon for another video.